Good evening. My name is Rachel Griffin, and it's a pleasure to welcome you all here tonight. Tandem Press and the Jazz Studies program at the Mead Witter School of Music at the University of Wisconsin-Madison are pleased to present the fifth year of the Tandem Press Friday Jazz Series. We're delighted to welcome you, our audience here, and those of you listening live on the web. The series is made possible with the incredible support of the Brittingham Fund, the John and Carolyn Peterson Foundation, and the live streaming is brought to you by Audio for the Arts. This program could not have happened without Johannes Wallman, the John and Carolyn Peterson Chair in Jazz Studies, and his colleagues Nick Moran, Chris Rottmeyer, Les Hitthemig, and Cheryl Cassidy. I also want to thank the incredible students that are playing here tonight. Um, tonight, the program will feature the Jazz Composers Group, direct, directed by Sherelle Cassidy. During the intermission, we hope that you will view our latest exhibition titled From the Vault, which was created by Tom Garver, who is the former director of the Madison Arts Center, which is now the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art. The artworks in this exhibition were selected from the first 10 years of Tandem's existence, and please also feel free to stroll through the studio and see the prints in progress and the new Gabriel S. Haberland Printmaking Technology Studio. Just as a reminder, Tandem Press is open daily throughout the week and on Saturdays from noon to four. And then during intermission, for those of you at home, there will be a short interview with the curator Thomas Garver on his current exhibition in the Apex Gallery. Enjoy.
So this song is going to be called Spilled Coffee. It is uh, written by me. So it is based off the harmony of Misty, uh, which is a slow ballad and has been rearranged uh, to be part of a, a more Latin feel. So please enjoy Spilled Coffee. Ian. Um, the next one that we're going to do is one that I wrote called Prism. It is based on the changes of Over the Rainbow with a melody that I wrote.
The next tune we are playing is an arrangement I wrote of the old standard Never Will I Marry, made famous by Nancy Wilson, and this is our own arrangement, so I hope you enjoy.
Thank you, everyone. My name is Meredith. The next tune we're going to play is one that I wrote called It's Always a Sunny Day, and it's inspired by Sonny Rollins, generally, which is pretty big inspiration. Hope you enjoy it.
thanks again to the students. We're just gonna take a quick break. So during intermission, we hope that you will stop in the gallery and see our show from the vault. And for everyone watching at home, you'll see an interview with the curator of that show, Thomas Garver. And we also wanted to remind everyone that tomorrow we have our holiday open house and sale from 10 to four. So there will be printmaking demonstrations as well. And we'll see you soon after the intermission. It's hard for me to think of Tandem Press as being 30 years old because to, to myself and Audrey Martinovich, my business partner and our colleagues, we, it, it, Tandem Press sort of appeared out of the mist uh, about five years ago, like much like Brigadoon um, when we started doing the, the jazz series. But, uh, but since we've been doing this, we have discovered not only the great music from the, the jazz series itself, but also we're learning so much about visual art and print art and and who better to learn more from than than my guest Tom Garver who is uh, he is sometimes referred to as a former art historian but I don't think there's any such thing I think once an art historian always an art historian so let's call him professionally retired uh, but still an art historian Tom thank you so much for uh, being uh, being my guest today well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm delighted to be here, and it's been wonderful to work on, on this exhibition. Yeah, and let's talk about this exhibition. So it's called From the Vault, and you've taken these artworks literally from the vault, right. artworks that are 20 to 30 years old. Is that correct? That's right. And how did this, how did this come about? And, um, and, uh, and uh, just, yeah, what, well, what, what excites you about uh, this? Some months ago, I offered to volunteer my services in whatever way I could be useful uh, to Paula Penchenko, the, the uh, director of Tandem. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is one of the tasks that she asked me to undertake was uh, selecting an exhibition mm -hmm. for this time. And so I thought, well, you know, uh, I'm old, so what a, let's look at some stuff that's a little older mm -hmm. uh, and that's been there in the vault and has not been sold. Uh, and, you know, the emphasis here, as I think with all publishers of anything, music, you know, literature, whatever, they're always, what's next? Uh, here's, what we're, here's what we have on offer. Here's what we're thinking about uh, doing. Here's, uh, here's, the next, here's the next new thing. Mm -hmm. And so, well, what was the next new thing 30 years ago? Mm -hmm. L let's have a look at it. And I think that it's proved to be very strong work. It simply has not been seen. It didn't sell immediately, and so it's sort of set aside. And now we bring it out and, and have another look at it, and I think it's a, a very gratifying experience because it's, a, it's, it's very nice work. It is very nice work, and that leads me to ask you, how, what was your process for selecting? Because these, these obviously aren't all the artworks that you had to, from which to choose, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, so, so you, had to, you, had to, you had to pick some favorites, right. and, uh, and was, that a, was that a painful process to figure out what to exclude? Uh, well, I laid out more stuff than is here now, mm -hmm. uh, and then there are things that sort of floated to the surface, I guess you'd say, that I liked better when I saw them all laid out. There was some, I went through first uh, a whole set of illustrations of what, uh, uh, what was available mm -hmm. and select, made a selection from that and then you know, fitted it in the space and looked at it and, and made some uh, uh, deletions as I went along. Uh, and uh, uh, I can't say exactly how that happens. You just, and, and you know, I've had experience doing this before, so th that's, that's part of it, I guess. Um, but I think that I wanted to show a range of techniques, uh, a range of styles, uh, and uh, I, I think I also wanted people to see the, the energy uh, that was there, maybe that still remains in the vault, if you will, mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, that it may be a little older, but it's just as good. And, and uh, so uh, I picked uh, things that fitted in that, that, that I think have uh, a kind of uh, energy and uh, carrying power. Now, I love your 
views, the way you articulate the role that Tandem has within the university, because we think of the university or any university as being a research institution. We think of sciences, we think of mathematics, we think of things like yeah. that. And, uh, and how does Tandem fit into that model in, in your view? Well, I think the, uh, there's original research going on here. Uh, in the sciences and engineering and so on. And, and how does that start? Uh, it starts in part, I suppose, with somebody saying, all right, this has been done, what do we do next? But I think also some of it starts with, well, I have an idea. I wonder about this or that. And I think the same thing is, is true of art, works of art and artists. And the artists are going to come in here and they're going to bring their ideas, but their traditional styles, their own uh, original uh, techniques and, and the styles that have marked their work. But then they may say, well, what if we try this? And I think one of the interesting aspects of that uh, would be akin to the scientists saying, well, why don't we try this and then folks in the lab work on it. The, the, you know, the, the, uh, the PhD students and so on uh, go into the lab and they work on this idea that the principal researcher has, has developed. And I think that's exactly what happens here. The artist comes in and says, well, I'd like to try, I've been thinking about something, I'd like to try this. And then uh, he or she might say, uh, I, you know, I'd like to do this, but I'm not sure how to do it. And that's where I think the, the artisanal aspects of the specialists, I'll call them the master printers uh, here, would say, well, I think we could do this, but maybe we'd do it this way or that way and a little differently from what you had in mind. So there's a, a very close collaboration. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that I found in talking with the people uh, who work here is that at its best, the artist and the artisan are deeply entwined together than the, the work you see is uh, a dual product and, uh, and has been influenced by both. So that, that the, uh, this, is, this is not just uh, a labor, you know, a labor activity, uh, it is a creative activity on both on both the artist and the artisan, on the 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 person who effectuates the work. So there is a point at which the creative process meets up with the mechanical process, and sometimes things need to shift a little bit to to make the twain meet. Essentially, exactly. Okay. And the uh, uh, tonight. Uh, they're opening here the uh, Gabriel Haberland Technology Center. And so there's all kinds of new kinds of equipment, scanners, uh, 3D printers, all kinds of other devices. How will, these, how will these things be used? And sometimes I think people take a front at this. They think you're attacking a great, you know, the great history of the printmaking medium, the lithograph, the etching, uh, so on, wood, the woodcut. Y yes, that's right, but uh, all of these things are being challenged and attacked all the time. Just the way you say, why do we have to go any further than aspirin, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and so there, uh, I think at times, um, everybody thinks, yes, of course you have to do research in science, but art somehow springs full-blown from the head of the artist. Mm -hmm. and. You forget this, this collegial, this collaboration that is so important. Excellent. These works are, I, I've just had a few minutes to scan over them, but they're very different and very unique. And I'm wondering if there are a couple that you would like to point out and, uh, and talk about in terms of either being your favorites or being maybe just uh, of, of particular interest to you for some reason. Well, I think there are some that that um, uh, I like, I can't say I like them more or less, but I think that are wonderful examples of what they are. 
Uh, and I think the, the Robert Cottingham that meets you uh, at the, the front door, the, the back end or the, the end of a freight car, you know, with the, the wheel in it, uh, the, the brake wheel, uh, is a very powerful print because it's an object, a, the subject is an object you would never consider for a moment until the artist has isolated it and separated it. And also its size, you know, it's seven feet tall. <laughs> uh, the, the grandeur of the size is amazing. And I, I'm particularly taken on the other end with a rather small print by uh, Sam Richardson over here, an artist no longer living, but one whom I knew uh, on the West Coast and made an exhibition for. Is that the hand? That's or, the hand. Okay. And uh, uh, it's, I can't identify what it is in particular that I like about it, except that it's a very powerful, touching uh, print and, and has a lot of visual potency. I'll just put it that way. It's, you're drawn to it. What is it? Uh, it's visual and not uh, literate, maybe. It just does something to you. Hmm. Uh, and there are others, the, the Aminoff, Behind me here, the, this great uh, 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 sort of uh, prickly shape uh, is, I think graphically, it's hung right there so you see it as you come in because it's, uh, uh, it's as potent as a stop sign. You know, you, you, you are drawn immediately to it, uh, but it may have the power of a stop sign, but it has... Uh, all the textures and and sensibilities of a work of art. Mm -hmm. And to, to wrap up, I have a personal question for you. When you are you are an academic, you are an art historian. You understand a lot of different aspects of the the theory behind art, and and you have a lot of knowledge of of how art is made. And yet you and you also have an appreciation of the final product do those two things are those two things separate in your mind or do they do they combine um it's it's sometimes we run into it in the in the music business you look at music much differently when you're recording it than if you're just sitting at home listening to it well i would think in music one of the issues there is the performance of it i mean you have it written out uh generally i would say it's mm -hmm. there are the notes uh, and you think uh, uh, this is a superb performance for reasons that might be hard to describe, or it's some hack, you know, who, who's hitting all the notes, but who cares? <laughs> uh, and I think the, the, you could say that, I suppose, uh, so there's the, mu the music on the one hand and the performance, how that's transmitted, and so that's maybe less obvious in art, I think, where the two... The, the idea, uh, the information, and the, the final transliteration of it are all pretty much the same. They're, they're mixed together, that somebody's going to do this and nobody else is going to come along and perform it uh, afterwards, or if they do, you're going to say they're copying it. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, I think there you have to decide, yes, I like this performance, or no, I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, in looking at this, I like a lot of the performances I see here. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. As do I. Okay. Is there anything that you wish I had asked you that I, that I have neglected to? No, I, I don't think so. Great. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Tom Garver, thank you so much. And, uh, and we want to also thank Paula Panchenko uh, for working, uh, making this happen with you. And thank you for your work in putting this together. Again, Tom Garver, um, a, a man of uh, too many credentials to, uh, to mention, but uh, a retired art historian who is, uh, is, is still definitely very much an active art historian and um, and thank you for putting this together and thank you for chatting with thank me. you very much all right everyone i would like to reintroduce the second half of the program and the jazz composers group <laughs>
Um, that last song we played was a song I wrote entitled Genesis 22. And we will keep going in that same theme of modal songs with McCoy Tyner's Contemplation.
So for this next song, uh, it's called State Street, which is a street right by UW, and that's what this is inspired by. It's written by me. <laughs>
All right, the next one we're going to do is a tune that I wrote uh, early in the semester, um, and this one is called Gold. Thank you. 
All right, everyone, thanks again for coming out. We're going to do one more. Um, once again, we're the Jazz Composers Ensemble, and this one is called The Call to Order, and it is by our director uh, for this semester, Sherelle Cassidy.
Thank you to our amazing students, and thank you, yeah. Thank you all for coming out and tuning in online. And one more reminder, Holiday Open House tomorrow from 10 to 4, printmaking demonstrations. Um, it's very relaxed, so come and go as you please. And we look forward to seeing you for our next Friday Night Jazz concert on January 31st of next year. Thanks again for coming out.